Hello, I'm Mix Miles and Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I've just purchased myself one of these um, for heating my shed, which is one of these Chinese diesel heaters that everyone's banging on about. Now I've watched a couple of videos um, recently. Uh, my very good friend Martin Butler and Sharon Butler from Retro Restore, Retro Hacks and Butler's Empire have been uh, doing lots of cost of living crisis, money saving ideas like um, air fryers and what have you. But just recently, um, he picked up a, uh, a diesel heater. He's been running it in his shed, and he's been saying he gets some really good results from them. So, they're around about eight to 100 pound. I'll try and leave a link in the description um, of where you can find one of these. Um, and then, they're 12 volt supplied, so you use, use a, a 12 volt battery or a 12 volt battery converter, you know, 250 converter, 240 converter. Um, so I decided to buy one. Now, I will be down the shed normally, the time is, 10 to 7 at night, and I ain't going down the shed. It hasn't got above freezing for about the past two weeks dead in the, in, on the south coast. So I come indoors, so it may get a, a bit of noise because people are walking about having dinner bits and pieces. So this is the only sort of quiet spot in the whole house at the moment. Um, so I thought I'd get this out of the box. Now I have been doing a bit of research myself, so I, got, I can't take any uh, credit for this, but I have been watching a few videos of people doing a few modifications before they install. Um, so that's what I want to do today. I bought a modification kit, which you can actually buy off of um, off of eBay. Millie and Josh are just behind the camera now. Millie's got her like a Christmas pajamas on. She's tiptoeing. Don't know why. I have severe bit noise, but we're already here. So there's my Josh Bosch. There's Josh Bosch. There he's there. Millie Moo's just there's my little Millie Moo. Here's Millie Moo. Um, so we're going to be doing that. So I have bought. Uh, this is what I bought from, uh, initially. I bought this off of Martin from um, Retro Restores. Uh, channel link. Uh, he puts some links into um, where you can buy this stuff. Uh, this is called a. You get out of box. I think it's a Mercury. I think I saw it advertised as. I know that Steve the Transit Camper also um, um, ordered one of these. Uh, Mercury 15 amp regulated power supply. That was about 35, 40 quid, something like that. But I did buy it off of Martin's link. So I put a couple of quid in Martin's pocket as well. So there you go, um, Mr. B. Um, so that's my power supply sorted out. Now the only problem is, Millie, dinner's ready. Um, the only problem is with these is if you have a power cut, um, your diesel heater will need to cool down. And people have been having burning out issues where they, the power source is just gone and the heat is just turned off itself. Um, so you may need want to back this up with a, a 12 volt battery also feeding onto it, okay? Um, just in case the power does does drop out. But here in the south coast, we don't get a lot of power outages, despite the fact we did actually have one today for about 30 seconds. Um, but that's the first one we've had for years. So um, I got that. So thank you very much, Mr. Butler, for supplying the uh, link to that. And also, uh, I bought myself a carbon monoxide alarm as well. Brand spanking new, never been used um, at all. So I've got to get that all out of the box. Uh, a bit of silica. I've um, got myself a, a carbon monoxide tester because you can't, you, you can never be too sure. So I've got one of those. So I've got to put all that together as well. And I've also bought myself uh, one of these. It's just a little tiny thermometer thing so I can test the, um, the temperatures. And then also off of Mr. Butler's um, Retro Restore channel, I bought some exhaust tape as well uh, for just making sure that the exhaust pipe is insulated so it doesn't heat up because my my workshop's wooden, so I don't want no, no um, heat to radiate. So, lots of bits and bobs. Let me get tidied up. I'll come back to you in two minutes once I've got it out of the box, and then we should go from there. If this is the first time I'm watching Mixed Muzz and Man, man hit the subscribe button, not that old bell. See the notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So, without further ado, let's get down dirty. Let's get this diesel heater out of the box and get some modifications on it so it should work even better. Right, let's get it unboxed. It comes with some instructions, or well, I have heard the instructions. <laughs> Not worth the paper they're written on. Small bit of pipe, that looks like the uh, air breather. Two bigger bits of pipe, that looks like the ducting for the heat. Uh, all your, your air filter jubilee clips. And then we've got the exhaust itself. Now mine didn't come with a muffler, I don't know why, but I think you can buy them um, 
online anyway. I think it's just, it's just some, some. So let me just get this, this diesel heater out the old box. Go. Put the box to one side. Now this is a three kilowatt one. Now my friend Hank in America, he's got a channel called uh, um, Henry Mawarski, Big Dog Repairs. He bought a, a, I think it was a five kilowatt one. And apparently there's no difference in them. So here it is. Now, this is a pulse pump system. So it's got a little tiny, tiny pump in there. And apparently it's gonna take about 200 and 50 pumps of that little tiny pump to actually fill up a five milliliter spoon. Okay, so it, it, do, it does not um, pump like, like, like you would think. It's a really, really small pump. So to undo it, just undo these little tiny clamps that are on the side here. There's four. Undo four of those, one each side. Cool. Now these are Chinese made copies of, of other bigger made brands. So you have to sort of go with the, the quality. Now this is, this is the reason why I'm doing modifications to this before I'm even setting it up. Because there are some modifications to be had. So that's the top. As you can see, it, it, it is quite flimsy, okay? But you know, for what I'm paying for this, it wasn't a great deal of money. So let me just, Put that back together and then I'll bring it a bit closer and have a look at the modifications I'm going to make to this um, little tiny here pump to draw and make it run better and a little bit more silent if possible. Right, I've got you zoomed in. Um, so the first initial problem we have is, no, it's not a problem, it's just, it's just the way it's designed, right? Um, as I say, it's very, very flimsy. So you, have to, you, have to, you have to think of things like this. For fuel tank, absolutely just is just sitting there floating so what i'm going to do i'm just going to put some big cable ties around here just to hold that fuel tank still we've already got a small wire trapped underneath uh the fuel tank so we'll be strapping this fuel tank down and around and around the bracket just just on the bottom here okay because i want i want the fuel tank not to be moving about um but the main problem we have is is you have these really really um flimsy flexible um fuel pipes on here okay now it's not a good thing, okay, because this little tiny pump just here, as I say, is so small, um, it only delivers zero, about 0 0.2 of a mil every single pulse on this little tiny pulse pump. Well, that's a tiny amount, 0 0.2 of a mil. Um, and if this pipe is flexing at all and contracting, because it is spongy, you're gonna lose a little bit of that. So you do stand a chance of actually not receiving a good fuel delivery because this little tiny fuel pipe is uh, is flexing and mucking about. Now, if you go online, if you've got it on, onto eBay, you can actually buy a kit. It cost me nine quid. And this kit is called a diesel fuel pump uh, modification kit, okay? So in that kit, you get about five meters of solid nylon, um, two millimeter, uh, inside diameter fuel line. You also get a proper filter, a metal gauze one, which is designed for diesels, diesel fuels, um, not the paper kind. And you also get a, uh, an abundance of these little tiny stainless steel clips as well. And then you get a load of these fuel lines as well to go on top of that, okay? But I'll show you where they go in a minute. So the idea is, is by putting these fuel lines on, you are reducing the amount of flex because these these are solid they don't they just don't move whereas these ones and i'll show you in a bit um this one will actually move quite a lot as well and there's no clamps on here at all so that's the first one we're going to be doing today is um stage one change change these fuel these, these these fuel lines out so that actually when the pump is actually pulsing we're actually getting that 0 0.2 of a mil and nothing underneath it because anything underneath it would cause that little tiny piston inside there inside that pump, because there's no piston ring in there, it's just metal on metal. And that, by design fault, will actually cause a cavitation inside the bore, which will generate friction bubbles, which will come out through your fuel line. Now the problem is, that may not sound like a big issue, but these little pumps don't have a lot of suck, they have more 
of a blow on them, a bit like how we're designed. We can't suck in very fast and hard, but we can certainly blow out really fast. The problem is, when this starts to cavitate, the air, there is a risk that the air bubbles become so big up this top corner that this little tiny pump can't actually push those air bubbles out. And if it can't push air bubbles out and away, just to give you clear, clear fluid, then you're gonna have a problem with, with fuel starvation. So with this nylon pipe that doesn't flex, you're not gonna get that issue. Smaller diameter, no flex, so therefore any cavitational bubbles, which are tiny, will go all the way through, and then eventually all you're then left with is just pure diesel to go through your machine. So let me get this machine tipped up on its, on its end first. I wanna pull the fuel line off the bottom and off this pump, and then we can then fit this first stage of a modification onto it. Right, so we've actually um, got the, the, the diesel heater actually just laid on, on its side. Uh, here is your two uh, ports. This would be your exhaust port because it's furthest away from the fuel line. And this would be your air breather. Um, now, notice there's no insulation. There's no shield, no, no heat transfer shield from here to here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this pipe off first off. And look how easy that pipe comes off. Look, just boom. Absolutely no resistance whatsoever. So what we're going to do, that pipe's going to be removed in a minute. But this is going to be the pipe that goes over it. So that go over there, okay, which is a nice snug fit, probably no worse, no better than what that is. But that already is supplying your insulation from your, from your exhaust port, which that'll get, that get red hot um, to your fuel pipe. And then your fuel pipe will be pushed in. Now it's not going to go over the top of that. It's just going to butt up against it, okay? And we're going to form a shield by putting a clamp on this end the fuel pipe into there, all the way through, so we know that we're, we're actually touching this, um, this end of, of the, the diesel nozzle. Let me push it all the way in so I know that it's as far as it needs to go. And push that in there. And once you know where it is, you can then push that on. Yeah, it is. And I know that fuel line is actually touching that part of, 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 the, out of the fuel inlet there, okay? Um, two clamps, one here and one there, and that will secure that pipe, and there's, there's a lot less risk now of this pipe overheating compared to this little cheap, whatever that is. See how much that flex is? Look, can you see that? See the flex on it? Absolutely shocking. So, but this pipe doesn't do that. So that'd be the first mod we're gonna do. Right, so all I've done is, this pipe um, just tucks in under one of the holes just down the bottom here and goes down through the side here, like under, this, under this plate, that's all it does. Just gonna remove this now off of, look how easy that fell off of there, my lord. So that pipe, as I say, look at the flex in that pipe. Look, see that flex? That's how soft it is, okay? And every single pump you get, that's just gonna be flexing ever so slightly and restricting that flow, okay? So that ain't no good to us. So then we've got a bit more of this pipe here. Um, that's gonna go over the top of that one. That's a nice snug fit on there, Mick, my lord. I'm gonna struggle to get sight on that. And then that pipe again will be sleeved and just butted onto the end of that there like so. So we need to make sure once we've got this end on, we have enough pipe coming up through to marry onto this end. Exactly the same thing, two clamps. That must go, to, you want it to be like that, that's what you're looking for. So that bit is roughly in, in the middle, so it's sleeved. Yeah, that's good enough. Right, so first thing to do is to tip the um, machine back on its other side. Now this would be where I'm going to try and fit uh, the diesel filter to just inside here if I can. That's going to be really, really tricky. Um, but I could also just put it in line on the other side of the pump. So it's not life or death. So let's just tip that over. Back onto its side again. That's it. And the first thing we're going to go for is fitting it to this side here. So this is literally going to push this pipe inside, all the way in, just so we know, without kinking it, Mick. Just so we know that's roughly where it needs to be. Let me just try and force that in there, there you go, so that's gone in. Right, that's gone all the way in now, okay? So a little blue line is, you can just see it just there, okay? So now we can get a couple of clamps, so put one on first, get rid of it. Put the second one on, get rid of it. So now we can now push this little tiny fuel hose all the way on. Now I know that that is all the way on, as far as it needs to be. Right, with that now done, I can now cut this 
bit of fuel, this cable tie off his fuel line. Go and careful not to cut into the actual fly itself. Like that. So now I can now bring in my two clips and then push one up onto there. Now I want to go it round the other way, would have been nice, Mick, I think. Well, I should be able to get it. Mm, it would have been nice to go around the other way, Mick. Let me take that off. This is a bit of a bit of forward thinking on my behalf would have been nice. That's got to go on to there. Hi, Mrs. P. Hey. And then these clamps here, you want them so that you can actually get access to them via the top, okay? So they've got to go on to there. Can I have a count please, darling? Thank you, honey. And then we're going to push this pipe into all. I want to go all the way up in so it butts up against. Are you laughing at me? <laughs> that goes all the way up into that hole there. Now, if you're not sure if it's actually gone, you can just pull the pipe off, the, off this pipe here, pull it out of touch, and then just try and push that white pipe in a bit. That's gone up in. And then push this black pipe on top. Now, if it sticks there, you know you're all the way in. So just push that, and that'll push that metal pipe out of touch and you know then that you're all the way in. And then put your metal clamp, one at the back, one at the front, and then with a screwdriver, and I actually have a couple of sockets, because I want to make sure that these are done up nice and tight and they're not going to fail, because this would be your fuel. And I've got a couple of decent size um, extension bars. I think they'd be about an eight mil, I'd say, give or take. Be about an eight, no, a six. Try that. They are going to be a size seven. So for size seven, on a little tiny ratchet, we can now make sure that these little tiny clamps is going to be done all the way up. Now they have got a they have got a little flat head on there as well. So just start it off. But you want to make sure that that's done up nice up nice and tight because you don't want that failing. At all, and that's quite tight. That is, I like that. And then, same on this one here. You just want to make sure that that pipe is well pressed against because you don't want to get no leaks. Once it's grabbed it, you can sort of do it up. And the good thing with these clamps is they, they do actually seal all the way around. That's what I like about them. Good. Right. Now that's well on there. That ain't coming off for love nor money. Okay. So we have a good, solid fixture here now. Um, so there's no fuel can go up. That's, that's definite. Um, if it is, there's, just, there's a metal shield here anyway, no problem. It's not going to conduct, conduct no heat. It actually for something feels like rubber as well, actually. Yeah, like rubber. Um, and no fuel will be able to come down here. The advantage is you actually will be able to see it if it does, but as long as you do them up, you should be golden. So now what I want to do is bring in my green pipe and measure the length of this against the length of that and then cut the according length off of the white stuff. And then just make sure when you cut these, not to use side cutters or pliers, use a little Stanley knife. Otherwise, um, you'll pinch the end and bend them over. So. Let me get it tipped back onto its front again now, onto its top, and then uh, we're going to reroute this pipe all the way up, uh, back up to the pump, and then fit the inline fuel filter, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so the fuel lines now come out the bottom and to this side here. Now make sure it comes out this side here and not the exhaust side, I was be too close. So make sure it comes out the intake side. And what I've done is I've just allowed enough pipe there so that the actual intake pipe is actually straight before it bends round, okay? So just make sure you've got enough bit of room there for that fuel pipe to be level. Um, and then that's where, we're, that's where we're gonna go up and over onto, onto this line here. Um, but I'm gonna incorporate a, um, a diesel filter inside here, okay? So I'm gonna put my diesel filter, I'm gonna go up here. In fact, I'm gonna turn it round, go around the other way with it. That'd be easy for you guys to see because it wants to be around this side of the pump. So let me just reroute that again. Take that out. 
and then bring that through that hole there. Uh, through that one. And grab that. Ooh. Fingers, fingers. Up through there. Not to kink the pipe, so make sure you've got plenty of a line on that pipe. That'd be lovely. And then, see how that's going to go onto there. Come up through this hole here. That keeps it all inside. And my diesel filter um, is going to go in, in line here. That's where it's going to go. So I'm going to cut that. Uh, I'm going to cut that just about here because I don't want it to be actually in that hole. I'm going to cut that about there. And by cutting it with a Stanley knife, you can actually get a de decent hole rather than if you pinch it with side cutters, as I did on purpose, you can see how it's squished. So now, again, I'll get my diesel filter. I want to go that way. So make sure it's actually going to capture any stuff going through. It doesn't go that way up, okay? It, the diesel comes in through this filter and then fills up from there. So that's where that bit's going to go like that. And then that bit there will fit onto there like so, okay? So will it fit through that hole first, Mick? Will it or not? No, not quite, okay. So this bit here has got to have a piece of the old uh, black pipe. Just want to sort of measure about roughly halfway because that filter's got to go on. So that's got to go on that way. So that'll be on there. So we like that. So that's going to be about halfway, just under half. That's no drama. So I know that this piece here has got to go in at least three quarters. Okay, so I'll get my clamps on first, get them ready. I'll go that way there, and that way there with the two clamps. And then that piece there has got to go all the way up inside. There my old snips. And push that all the way up to that diesel filter, which is there, that's on. And then do up those two. Um, Little tiny clips. Let me put my mic down. I'm getting a bit warm in here. I was complaining that the shed's too cold, and now I'm red hot inside the old kitchen. No, that's because the heating's on. Oh, I found it. So now, these can be done up. And you would have thought they'd come with a little tiny filter on here, but they didn't. Another clamp in there. Do that up. I'm just going to do them loosely for now. So I want to nick them up later on when the whole system is all, all, is all together. Now the last bit of pipe, I should have two more bits left, which I have. Um, and that's going to go onto there and onto there. So that bit goes onto a tuck pump. Now that's going to be quite a tight fit, I'd say, which is what you want. There you go. And then this piece is going to go all the way inside there. We're going to push that all the way down. So it matches up with the pipe. I just felt that ground off home then. Sure I did. Yeah, lovely. Two clamps go onto there. And I'm going to go, so I go that side up. So one on there. In fact, I'll go the other way with it, Mick. I'll do this up later. Lovely job. And then what I'd like to do is just try and rest this. This will be cable tied in. So I don't want this pulsating. I've got some foam to put around this in a minute. But what I'll do now, I want to bring that round and I'll cut that. I don't want a too fiercer angle on it. Something like that would be nice. So I'm going to cut that about there. About there. A bit longer than what I need. I can always take a bit more if need be. I'm going to push this one on all the way. I'm going to get two two more clamps. I'll give you two spare bollocks in case you make a balls up, which is good. So that's going to go onto there. That's going to go onto there. And then this one here is going to be bent into there all the way home. Oh, that's got it or not, Mick. I might have to mark that one. Oh, it's going in. 
And that's gone all away though. I think it has. Should have marked it, shouldn't I? Just squeeze it a touch, just open them back up. That's all the way in. So now these clamps here can come down. They got to be clamped up onto there. And I can just remove all of this stuff down out of the way. Now what what come with the machine in the packaging with this 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 stuff here, this foam stuff. I'm going to cut that to size and put that around the back because as this pulses, that's going to make this pulse as well. Okay, so. You don't want no, no extra knocking noise. So what I might do, I might just take a bit of this, cut it off. It even comes a bit of a thinner, thinner bit if you want it. And just wrap that around that filter so that um, we're getting no pulsing vibration noise happening. Because you don't want that. That'd be nice if that just sat in there like that. That'd be absolutely lush. So that's the upgrade. Uh, let me just get those done up just so we know what the score is. Loosey goosey first. I'm gonna do that one up as well, on top of the, the old fuel pump. Now they have said another good modification is, is that you can actually suspend your fuel pump like in like a spider web so if you imagine having one bolt here one bolt here one bolt here one bolt here on the back and have the bolts coming through you can then push that tank over that'd be nice and then you have the pump in the middle and just suspend it off of like elastic bands or cable ties that way your pump won't make that much noise now i'm not overly concerned about the input and noise because i do use a microphone uh, for all my videos on my channel and generally nine times out of ten it only picks stuff up with inside of about two two meters. Now that's not going to affect me in my shed. Um, using like, using the, the road wires go. That should be all right, I'm thinking. But we give it a go. I'm just nicking that up. That's good. We're happy with that one. Let's nick this one up. Been a bit gentle because this is plastic on the on the on the filter. You don't want to break nothing. But by using a socket, you are guaranteeing you're doing yourself a lot tighter than with a screwdriver. That's that one. Now, did I do the other one? Nick? I can't even remember. Let me just get under here. Yeah, that one's done. So my fuel lines are now all done. That's the that's the modification. So a bit of foam just to go around this um, this fuel line oh, around this fuel filter. I'm gonna get a pair of scissors. I just want to stop it. So I literally just want to stop it from making a bit of a noise. Now what you can also do is just remove the, the, the bolt that's, that's actually suspending the pump and put a bit behind that as well if you wanted to just here, but I'm not going to bother. So all I'm going to do, just want, I just don't want this, this fuel line and stuff vibrating. If it vibrates, it's going to wear itself. So what I would like to do is just try and cram some of this some of this stuff down through the hole here, just to sort of cradle that that filter and just sort of protect it from rubbing against some of these sharper edges. It wasn't designed to take a filter. But it is now, she's been mick mowered. There you go, that's lovely in there. And if I get a bit the other side, just to wedge down into there, like that. Oh, see, now that's now solid. Not going to cause no vibrations. 
Yeah. So we like that. That's good. So now, what I can now do is now that's going to vibrate on the top of that pump. I know it is top top of that cabinet because that was designed to go down like that. So that might go down a bit lower, make us make us some houses. I might just try and squeeze that filter down into all like that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. That's where it wanted to be. It's good. So now that ain't gonna make no noise. So now we put the lid back on. Um, I'm gonna cable tie the, the, this tank down so that ain't mucking about. Um, we can now say we've now got this new fuel line in place. Um, and that is a much thinner diameter. So that's gonna give us more fuel um, compared to this cheap, cheap, nasty, well, it's actually split there. This cheap, nasty um, fuel line. Uh, which has got too much flex in it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even use that for, for two-stroke fuel. So that's good, man. So that's a much better um, way of delivering the fuel. fuel better fuel dr um, drive. Diesel filter, because it is, it is a dirty fuel with diesel. And that's why lots of people have been saying um, about these, these heaters. Why didn't they put the, the, um, the hose at the bottom? Well, that's where all the sediment sits down there. You don't want that. So that's the main reason. So now all that in place, just want to make sure these are dark as well before we go any further. That was uh, in the factory. Let's get on with that one. Not brilliant. That was loose, that one. Right up here now. So... Hopefully, we've uh, now um, cured a bit of the issues that people are having with these diesel heaters because um, they're not getting the fuel that they should do. If it's not getting the fuel, you won't be getting the heat. Let me put it back together and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> okay, so one of the mod I'm gonna do is because of this uh, bracket up the top here, I don't want that rattling. So there's actually provision for me to just to drop this pump down a touch. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna loosen off this bolt here we should be a little tiny 10 mil. I'm gonna loosen that off. And I'm gonna drop that pump down. Now they say that you should be running a pump anywhere between 30, uh, of, sorry, of 45 to sort of 90 degree angles. Um, so as it is now, sort of 30 degrees is fine. That is a rough science, guys. It's not an actual science. I'm going to take that off. Drop that little tiny nut down. And then I'm going to get a little bit of this foam, foam packaging that come with it. I'm going to cut just a little tiny small square off. Just so I can sit that behind the pump. And that should, because this rubber is quite, quite hard. I'm going to slide that behind the pump. Okay. All the way down. Now there is a second hole. On, on my machine, that's where it was, and that's where it's going to go. Okay, so I'm going to drop my pump down to a lower setting. Where's my bolt gone? There it is. I'm going to feed my bolt through that, that bottom hole and through the foam as well. I want to go through the foam, so right in through the center of that foam. It's a bit fiddly because uh, there isn't a lot of room. I'm gonna pack it up against that filter, it'll be lush. There you go, somewhere there, Mick. All right, hold that, put a hole through that, through that foam. And that'll hold the foam in place. And I'll get that nut out as well whilst I'm here. Grab that little tiny nut. There it is. And then force that pump down over top of that foam. And then put it through the hole. Through to all, where's the old one? Where is it? There it goes. That's gone in. And I can then put that nut on the end of that bolt and do that little tiny, that little tiny 10 mil back up ever so gently. Get it started. Once it's started, it'll be away. 
and now what that's achieved is it's actually lowered the the fuel pump um, into the system and it won't rattle across the top of that I've also put a bit of foam on the back of it you're not you shouldn't be getting that knock knock noise now you're never going to silence the pump unless you actually engulf it in a thing of fiberglass resin or something like that I don't know that mad this, this isn't essential to me but an extra bit of foam on the back of that will help it I don't want to drive too tight because I don't want to make that that foam too solid so I want just enough to make sure that the actual pump is secure which it is and now I can tip that pump about upright something like that that do us so now it's a nice little little push over over top and it's got all the way down down to the uh, injector system itself as i say these pumps have a better pushing capability than a sucking capability so so that's good so now that's all in what i could do get another little bit of pipe foam and just literally just tuck it in behind that a few cable ties just to make sure it's not it's not going to knock anywhere okay but it shouldn't do that should be fine okay you're not going to hear about those sort of noises so that should be good yeah, we're happy with that. I might put that in there. Stop any noise there, that's good. Right, I'm happy, are you guys happy? Um, let's get the cover back on then. Take the fuel cap off. And then we'll, uh, we'll go to put that back on. Uh, that way. So I'm not pinching no cables. That goes all the way down, that goes on. We're about there. Put the first lot of clamps on. Where are we? That's the first clamp. Second clamp. Turn it round. Make sure we're not pinching anything. Okay, that's good. That one, that's all down. That's all down. That's good. Fuel cap back on. Good. So now, no rattles in there. That's good. I've got to, just got to lock down that, that fuel tank. Um, just not happy with the way that that's actually sat, but it's not going to cause a massive issue for me because this is going to be fixed in my shed rather than. Um, rather than uh, wrapping about the back of a van. So the modifications I've done is literally just changed over the, the cheap um, pipe that comes with it. Because look, because as I say, look at that, look at the flex in that pipe. Okay, compared to the narrower dimension pipe, you're seeing you buy these on online. Um, you could even just get the pipe and use this as a, as an insulation for it. But you know, honestly, the black stuff is better. So if you get the thinner bore pipe, that way you get much better pressure behind uh, behind that piston. So that's good. Um, so now it's all left for me to do. I've got to sort out my exhaust. Um, that's going to go on the bottom. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that yet. So there's my new um, my new pipe assembly. There it is there, look, which is going to be now insulated away from the exhaust itself. Okay, um, and the exhaust I think it's going to come out. And it's going to be around this way for me in my shed. That's the way I want it to be like so, blowing the heat towards me. Or I could even have it so that um, it goes out the back. But if it goes out the back, this is how bad design it is. I'm not saying it's a bad design, but if you have it going out the back, it's got to go past this fuel line. That's the idea. So I'm going to put my inlet on there. So my inlet pipe will go onto here, and that'll just go out the back, like that, I think. Yep. Um, and then my exhaust. Okay, so my exhaust is now wrapped, and I, I triple wrapped it, okay? So there's plenty of insulation on there to keep the heat down, um, so I don't want to get no heat transfer coming uh, through the wall when I put it through the wall. Um, so what we're gonna do is, uh, front of the machine is down down tither end. I'm going to put my Jubilee clip on, and again, there should be a gap here for me to get all the way through, so that's a good thing. I'm then going to put this Jubilee clip on, 
and then that's then going to go onto there all the way up as far as we can get it I don't want no vapors coming out like so nice and straight something like that and then I'll get my Jubilee clip and I want that to sit on there about there now this is going to be done quite tight guys because you really really don't want no vapors coming out of this is there a lip on that pipe or what what is there I think it only goes up so far about there, all right, nice and straight then. Just because I can add, put a hole straight through the wall, something like that. And I'm going to get my Jubilee clip, bring that round, have it about there. And I'm get me my socket if, it, if that would fit, that'd be lush if that fits. <sighs> Don't fit, but I might get it this way. Let's put that all oh, go through. I'll go through. Oh, no, yeah, it does cool that socket going to there. Boom, back up a touch, and then get that Jubilee clip on. On there, and start to nick that up. Now that's got it up nice and tight, guys, because as I say, you don't want no vapors coming off of there. You could even put two on if you wanted. I'm gonna go right at the top end of it, but not so it overlips it, overlaps it, lips it, laps it. On about there. Now, we can now do that up nice and securely. And I want that on there tight, because you don't want that failing. <sighs> Take that off. Right, that's it. So, we now have my exhaust, um, which is now fully wrapped. There shouldn't be a lot of heat transfer coming off that, because that uh, that'd be well insulated, okay? Um, and then I've got my fuel pipe, which I want to move back so I'm going to use one of these for now just to hold it I'll probably change it later on just want to literally put that on I just all I want to do is just hold that fuel line out the way see how close that exhaust pipe is but bearing in mind it has been triple wrapped so I just want to hook that up just so it just keeps that fuel line away from that exhaust pipe see how close that is do it is quite a distance, but it is what it is. They say it's okay. We said I might even literally get hold of a bit of pipe and just bring that over. I might even take back to that yet, just so it's right out the way of it. Okay, but that is triple wrapped, so there is quite a bit of insulation on there. So happy with that. So now, um, that's the modifications done. Um, heat wrap on the old exhaust. Um, all secured up and my new fuel line now on so tomorrow we'll be ready to um, get this little baby out into the shed drill a couple of holes and get it plumbed in get it working and get warm right so that's the modifications now all done new fuel lines uh, fuel filter uh, exhaust pipe on and and wrapped as well uh, exactly as Martin Butler from uh, Retro Resort did his I did triple wrap mine uh, just to make sure that that fuel, um, that, that heat transfer is kept down. Um, and what we'll be doing is I'm going to get that metal tie and I'm just going to bring it round. I'm going to try and cable tie that to that. So I'll, put, I'll probably put a cable tie on there to hold that in position and then just cable tie that to that. Just so it's out of the way, just so it, it can't sneak through there because any, any closer, and yeah, I don't like it. But uh, anyway, it's done. Um, diesel pump as a uh, fuel diesel pump has been lowered and some foam put behind just to try and reduce the knocking noise but we're there so that's the modification so tomorrow uh, down the shed drill a hole in the old side uh, mount the uh, heater on some blocks some four by two blocks so it's actually lower the, it's actually lower to have lower for, for this pipe I might bend that pipe just a touch more round um, and then we can wire it all up on the mercury 15, uh, what is it, 15 amp converter box, uh, wire that up, fill it up with diesel, turn it on, once I've got my carbon monoxide tester in place, and we'll see if this sort of diesel heat it does work, and if it actually provides a bit of heat for my workshop, and then I can get down there during the winter and work away without being too blinking cold. 
So thank you very much for Martin Butler for giving me some ideas over at Retro Restore and Butler's Empire. Go and check them out. Got some good videos over there. And um, hopefully you guys will come back, see how I fit this into the, into the workshop and uh, see it working and we'll see what results we get out of it. So I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Muds very, very soon. But until then, much more importantly, take it easy.